Did you know? Startling evidence has emerged, tying Rex Hoyerman to the Gilgo Beach murders. But that's just the beginning. Little did anyone suspect what lay hidden in his basement. An illicit cache of weapons, believed to have been used to silence his victims forever. Prepare to delve deep into the chilling secrets that await, as you discover what you'll learn about Rex Hoyerman. Two Witnesses you see, new witnesses have stepped forward with more information on the Gilgo Beach serial killer. First up is a female taxi driver. She recalled that on the night Shannon Gilbert vanished, she left with a man who matched Rex Hoyerman's description. They were together at the Sayville Motor Lodge on Sunrise Highway. The female driver said the giant man covered his face with his arms. He hopped into an SUV parked nearby and vanished into the night. Meanwhile, Shannon followed closely behind, crying, shaking, and was very upset. She got into the car while the driver zoomed off. The man, believed to be Hoyerman, promised to give her money to help her family. He did give her an envelope, but she discovered it was full of plain old paper. Shannon Gilbert was an escort, clients across the country. Her last client had lured her into visiting Sayville. He made her believe he was a nice man. He also promised to extend kindness to the rest of her family. Another witness opened up about Hoyerman's lifestyle. She said that she and her boyfriend were swingers. On the night Karen Vergata disappeared, they were at Hoyerman's home with her. Karen attended to her client as usual. Rex was all about multiple escorts. He welcomed at least two in his house at a time. His wife knew about the arrangement and remained upstairs. The witness left Hoyernan's house while Vergata stayed behind. That was the last time she saw and spoke with her Vergata. It gets even more bone-chilling. Authorities released the audio of a horrifying phone call from one of the victims. The last call around 4.51 a.m. on May 1st, 2010, Shannon Gilbert made a frantic call to 911. The call lasted for about 22 minutes. She had left a client's house in Oak Beach. Her speech was all over the place and incoherent. Sometimes she did respond to the questions asked, and at other times, she is screaming for help. The 24-year-old continuously yelled, Somebody's after me! There's somebody after me! She repeated it over three times to the New York State Police dispatcher. The dispatcher tries to figure out her location, but Shannon is not cooperating. Instead, she continues yelling. She pleads with the dispatcher to trace the call, but that is impossible at the moment. She begs the dispatcher one more time. Please, there's somebody after me. Meanwhile, the background was filled with bangs, knocks, and heavy breathing. Shannon is pleading with a man to stop. She is scared and confused. The phone cuts off, and the dispatcher loses connection with the victim. The police try to trace the caller's location, but by the time they arrive, she's gone. At first, investigators doubt that she was murdered. They thought that she was high on drugs and wandered off into the marsh, where she died of hypothermia or drowning. Her family disagreed with the police and fought for a second opinion. The second autopsy suggested that the victim met a violent end. In other words, she may have been strangled. The medical examiner also noted that Shannon had a small hyoid bone in her neck. It was cracked on one edge. This evidence proves that she did not die of natural causes. Dr. Michael Badden ruled it as a possible homicide. Even more disturbing is that Shannon was wearing a bra in pictures taken of her body. Unfortunately, the band holding the two bra cups was cut in half. This makes her death suspicious. Someone who wanted her dead might have been tailing her. Forensic psychiatrist Carol Lieberman described the suspect as a serial sexual sadist. He was never satisfied with just torturing his victims. He also tormented families. He made twisted phone calls to their loved ones and inflicted more pain on them. Rex Hoyerman was thrilled to make those anonymous calls. As of when he made the calls, the technology for discovering local usage details was not popular. So he thought he could get away with it. Investigators have also found fake email addresses linked to him. Coming up next is the DNA evidence that settles the decade-long debate. Prosecutors are tightening loose ends, and it's about to get intense. DNA Evidence Before Rex Hoyerman's arrest, the cops kept a close eye on him. 
They had pole cameras installed near his house for a year and a half. One day, a surveillance team beside his office in Manhattan saw him trash a pizza box. It seemed pretty normal, but it wasn't. They retrieved the box and found leftover pizza inside. After analyzing the DNA on the pizza crust, it matched the DNA from the hair found on Waterman's body. The male hair was discovered inside the burlap used to wrap Megan Waterman's body. The hair was retrieved back in 2010, but it was unsuitable for testing. Fast forward to 2020, when prosecutors decided it was time to do a DNA analysis. A DNA profile had the answer they were searching for. After confirming a match, prosecutors wanted another proof. They asked the court to permit collecting a cheek swab from Hoyerman to prove his link to Waterman's killing. Luckily, the court graciously approved the request. So, they got a swab from Hoyerman's cheek, and you won't believe it. To their greatest shock, it was a match. But Rex Hoyerman's lawyer is crying foul. He says it's unclear if the hair really belongs to his client. He argues that DNA can be transferred, but with two tests pointing in the same direction, it's hard to think otherwise. Hold on. There's more. Investigators found a stash of weapons in Rex Hoyerman's house. They are suspicious, and here's why. Please press like and subscribe if you enjoyed our videos. Illegal Cache of Weapons So after Rex Hoyerman's arrest, the police raided his Long Island home for a 12-day search. They were hunting for evidence. Guess what they found? This discovery sent chills down their spine. His basement vault was packed to the brim with hundreds of weapons. I'm talking about nearly 300 of them. The stockpile includes handguns, magazines, assault weapons, shell casings, bullet fragments, and attachments. Here's where it gets interesting. Most of the guns were illegal. 26 handguns, 10 high-capacity magazines, and 15 assault weapons were possessed in violation of state firearms laws. Hoyerman had permits for only 92 of his guns. Further digging unveiled a more disturbing truth. Rex Hoyerman had guns dating back to the 1860s. Most were manufactured in various European countries and used in world wars. What is his deal with antique firearms? Did he have an ulterior motive? The police went deeper with a cool tech gadget to identify weird stuff underground. An excavator dug up the yard while investigators scraped through the earth. While the police are searching for new evidence, the Gilgo Beach suspect has petitioned the court to allow him to sell his guns to help his family. His gun collection is said to be worth over $300,000. His ex-wife's lawyer argued that she should keep the legally purchased guns. Where is this case heading? Will the judge rule for or against Rex Hoyerman? Drop your thoughts in the comments down below. If you're fascinated by crime stories like I am, please smash that like and subscribe button. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.